It is said that in ancient times there was a kingdom called Madantamalan. The kingdom was led by an evil king named Prabhu Duvasanka. The king had a habit that made the Madantamalan people very afraid, namely eating humans. No one dared to go against his wishes. One day, in the middle of the ocean, a young man was sailing with his two loyal servants. The young man's name was Alji Sokka, and his two servants were named Dora and Samada. Alji Sokka comes from Nimajadi, but there are some who say that he comes from Jambudi. India. They sailed to an island called Jambudi, which was famous for being very rich. Because of this, Alji Sokka was interested in setting foot on the island. What a sign is this! Upon their arrival on the island of Java, Alji Sokka continued his journey through the wilderness to look for local residents to get information on where the nearest village or kingdom was located because his aim was to spread knowledge to the community. Meanwhile, Alji Sokka and Dora were happy because they had a place to live in the village. While living in the village, the two of them diligently helped the housework. Apart from that, they also often socialized with village residents. The residents also liked their existence because of their polite character. One time, while talking with one of the Alji Sokka residents, he praised the state of the Madhan Kamlan country, which was very fertile and prosperous. However, something different could be seen from the look on the residents' faces when they answered Alji Sokka's words. Yes, this is the situation, sir. However. We live in the shadow of fear. There were even residents who fled and left the village because of the cruel king. Meanwhile, Alji Sokka and Dora were happy because they had a place to live in the village. While living in the village, the two of them diligently helped with housework. Apart from that, they also often socialized with village residents. The residents also liked their existence because of their polite character. One time, while talking with one of the Alji Sokka residents. He praised the state of the Madhan Kamlan country, which was very fertile and prosperous. However, something different could be seen from the look on the residents' faces when they answered Alji Sokka's words. Yes, this is the situation, sir. However, we live in the shadow of fear. There were even residents who fled and left the village because of the cruel king. Meanwhile, Alji Sokka and Dora were happy because they had a place to live in the village. While living in the village, the two of them diligently helped the housework. Apart from that, they also often socialized with village residents. The residents also liked their existence because of their polite character. One time, while talking with one of the Alji Sokka residents, he praised the state of the Madhan Kamlan country, which was very fertile and prosperous. However, Something different could be seen from the look on the residents' faces when they answered Alji Sokka's words. Yes, this is the situation, sir. However, we live in the shadow of fear. There were even residents who fled and left the village because of the cruel king. The king continued to step back, stretching out Alji Sokka's claws. It got further and further, and never ended until he reached a steep cliff on the edge of the southern sea. Realizing this strangeness. Prabhu Duvasankar was very angry. He just found out Alji Sokka's true intention, namely to end his rule over the Madhan Kamlan Kingdom. However, with Alji Sokka's supernatural powers, the stretched claw suddenly wrapped around Prabhu Duvasankar's body. The claw was so strong that the king's body, which was huge like a giant, was unable to move an inch. Then Alji Sokka jerked the claw. Instantly. Prabhu Duvasankar's body was thrown into the huge waves of the South Sea. In an instant, the giant body disappeared into the fierce waves. Due to Alji Sakha's success in eliminating Prabhu Duvasankar, the people of Madhan Kamlan cheered. They were happy because they were free from a king who liked to eat humans. However, unbeknownst to Alji Sakha, Prabhu Duvasankar was still surviving in the ocean. With his knowledge, he turned into a white crocodile and disappeared somewhere. Alji Sokka is now crowned king of Madhan Kamlan. He became a kind and wise king. Madhan Kamlan also experienced this heyday during his reign. Seeing Alji Sokka's sincerity, the boy was actually not willing to make an enemy of Prabhu Duvasankar. However, because Alji Sokka insisted, the governor finally took him to the palace. In the kingdom, the king began to get angry because the governor did not come. He wondered whether the people he used to eat had run out. He also muttered that if there was at least one human being who would be eaten, 
his request would be fulfilled when they arrived at the palace. Prabhu Duarte Sankar was happy because the governor had arrived to bring food. What is your name, young man? I heard from the governor that you are ready to be my today. Sorry, great King Duarte Sankar. I'm Alji Soka. Before the servant becomes the king's food, allow me to ask one thing. Say quickly, what is your wish? I will make it come true. I am very hungry. I only want a piece of land as big as the cloth I brought. That's all you want. Are you serious? Well, just take it if you want. Ajisaka immediately opened the cloth he was carrying and asked Prabhu Duryodhana to hold the end of the cloth. According to Ajisaka's request, the cloth continued to extend beyond the kingdom of Prabhu Duryodhana. The cloth stretched from the palace through residential areas, forests, mountains, and even down to the canyon valley. One day, Prabhu Ajisaka remembered the heirloom carrots he had entrusted to Simbada. Dora. Please bring me the carrots that are left with Sambada in the Kenhan Mountains, where we rested first. Yes, Prabhi Ajisaka. Servant does it. Dora finally went to meet Sambada. Upon arrival at Mount Kenhan, Dora conveyed Ajisaka's message to take the heirloom carrots. Sambada, I was sent by your majesty to take the carrots. Where's the carrots? But sorry, I can't hand it over to you or anyone else unless Prabhi Ajisaka himself comes to take it. So you don't believe me? I really have been given orders by the king. Not this time. I still adhere to your Majesty's mandate, no matter what the circumstances. Looks like you really have to be forced to be self-sufficient. I will seize it because Rabbi Ajisaka's orders are to bring home the heirloom carrots. Meanwhile, at the Madan Kanan Palace, something was bothering the king's mind. I don't know what it is, and it was unusual for Dora to be gone for so long. Finally, King Ajisaka decided to go after his two servants in Kenhan Mountains. During the journey, he sensed that something bad was happening. Arriving at their destination, Ajisaka was shocked to see Dora and somebody lying on the ground lifeless. You can see traces of a very fierce battle that took place in that place. Apparently, they fought until they died to uphold the mandate they carried. I'm sorry, you two are really loyal people to me. To perpetuate the loyalty of the two, King Ajisaka wrote something on a stone that said Hanal Saraka, there are two loyal messengers. Dr. Sawala disagree with each other and fight each other. Pa Dalja and Nayo, equally strong and tough. Maga Bafaga, finally die together. Ajisaka's writing on the stone is the origin of Javanese letters, or known as Javanese script.